Welcome back to Severe MMA and today I'm delighted to be joined by a man who's been on our radar for a long time but the first time for me speaking to him Team Rhino welterweight James Sheen he makes his uh, I've done this twice now I'm not going to delete this one I was about to say he makes his debut which he doesn't he's fighting Am Amiel Brown uh, this coming Friday so I'm not sure when this will be released but on Friday the 1st of October at Cage Warriors 128 James how are you doing today? I'm doing great Andy I'm doing great. I only when you said it's your debut, I was like, dude, man, what what fight is this for me? <laughs> and I was like, it's my fifth, it's my fifth ball fight now. You're you're a veteran uh, now. Yeah, a veteran, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. How feeling. are you feeling anyway ahead of ahead of the fight? Uh feeling great, to be honest. Like it's such a cliche that you always hear like every fighter saying like this is the best camp I've ever had. But if you had interviewed me before for the this fight camps, I, I definitely wouldn't have said that anyway. Um, but this camp has gone so smoothly, no injuries. Um, I've worked exactly what I wanted to work with the lads in the gym, and yeah, just just really looking forward. The the weight is good, everything's good. Like I couldn't ask for more, to be honest. Yeah, so talk to me about the injuries. Look, look it's been it seems like you've been plagued by injuries the last number of years. Obviously, you had that amazing fight with Ian Gary, and then. You were out. You were hoping to kind of get back in there, and then you you, you got injured. You came back from injury. You got that win over Kyron Sturrock, and then the ankle went. Uh, talk us through kind of the last number of years of injuries for you. Yeah, so I think I think it was just something was bound to give because I was even before the Ian Gary fight. Like I I didn't have like any major traumatic injuries, but I was like you, know, you always have niggly injuries in MMA. Like I'm sure every fighter has them. But I was training to such a level and my nutrition or my recovery wasn't matching that. So I was going super hard, but something had to give. And I feel once once in that fight, like my like I did my knee in the first round of that fight. And like since then it was just kind of like, oh yeah, I, I kind of need to change my training here. This this seems to be happening all the time. And I was it was just kind of a matter of time that like you need to be professional after training, before training. It's not just, oh, here's two hours in the morning or evening and you just go hard and that's it. It's You have to be disciplined in every aspect of the game. And I learned that the hard way, basically. And it, so detail, what were these specific injuries? So I know after the uh, the Kyron Sturrock fight, you were kind of, I know, I think you had sat out one of the trilogy shows because you had exams and then you were hoping to come back. Yeah. And then your, was it your ankle went? Yeah. So the the latest injury was I was, I was meant to fight Josh Plant. Uh, I can't remember. It was December uh, on one of the trilogies for Cage Wars. And the same thing with that that camp. It, it, it wasn't even going smoothly before that because I just had to come back from exams. Um, I wasn't training as much. And then right at the start of my camp, I'd gotten COVID. So I was trying to stay fit and then come back to the gym after that and try and uh, cram a fight camp together. Uh, and then literally the week before, uh, I broke my ankle. So... It was, it was kind of the same thing that it was just negligent stuff. I was trying to rush everything and realistically I couldn't get it done and it showed my body wasn't keeping up with it. And fair enough, like these things can happen at any time, like whether you're fit and healthy or not, like you can break bones. But like I just still felt like it was going down that road that like I wasn't helping that. I wasn't. I wasn't making sure before I went into training that I was good to go. I was coming in with a few bangs and bruises and you know yourself that like if you're coming in like that, how do you expect to push the limit and not suffer the consequences? And how did you feel when you returned to training after after suffering from COVID? Was it did, did you notice anything at all or like was it did you feel um, like back to full health or to, to be honest, like when when I had COVID, like I was still training. Had, like me and my younger brother had COVID, and Graham is a fighter as well. So like we were kind of still training among ourselves out the back garden. But definitely for like the first time I got it, I'd say like I knew I was getting sick, 
but after like three days maybe of having like a bit of a high temperature like no that was fairly fine it was fairly fine like it was just kind of the waiting to be done the whole two weeks and then get back to proper proper training kind of but uh when i came back like it's just the the, the first thing to go is kind of your timing and uh so that was the thing I noticed, like a bit of timing was off, but like the fitness wasn't too bad or like I had no problems with my like respiratory system or anything. So it was fine for me. You mentioned your your younger brother, Graham, there. And I, I think I was actually watching back an interview that you and your older brother, Matthew, did at the IMAFs uh, years ago with, An with um, Andrew McGann for Severe. And I, I think it's amazing, like the fact that the three of you, you know, have come up kind of together three brothers like can, yeah. can you talk a little bit about that like what was it like kind of coming up in mma it must be very special to come up with your, with your brothers it's it's definitely special because there's a few things like even in training like me graham and matthew like there's obviously the golden rule that in training you you take care of yourself you take care of your spar sparring partners like you don't go hell for leather because like everyone everyone like eats an extra heavy shot and like you don't know their intentions and everything. You know, you know your training partners, but you don't know them as well as your brothers. So it was just great the fact that anytime me, Matthew and Graham were training, we'd be able to go nearly a hundred percent trying to kill each other. And then at the end just laugh about it. I just know <laughs> that like, oh yeah, he like he tried to knock me out there two seconds ago, but like it's absolutely fine. Like it's it's all good. Like so We're you put it, you put a few extra percentages player. on the shots, would you? When the, when you're sparring each other, yeah, like it's 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 not even it wasn't even intentional. It's not like I was like, oh, nice little sparring match here. I'm gonna go harder because we can. It was just kind of that healthy competitiveness that like, and Andy would fuel it as well because he'd be like, oh, who's the best she and and everything, and any time that one of us did well in a class or any time one of us won a fight we're like oh, that's it that's that's Matthew that's Graham as the best Sheehan and then, who, who is the best Sheehan? I don't know it's highly it's highly debatable because Matthew has the IMAX uh, Graham's the up and comer and then I'm the only pro so like I don't know man I'd say me but go on so if a, if a Royal Rumble breaks out in your gaff right now who wins? I don't know for the first time Graham is actually heavier than me. And Graham, Graham's really good at the moment, but I still take him. I still take him all day. Yeah, you, wait, have, you wait, have to back yourself. Wait, wait, I take him. And so you mentioned there's obviously uh, Matthew won the, the IMAFs um, back, I think it was 2016. He, he's not fighting anymore, yeah. is he? Or what's, is he, no, is he so still? Matthew um, was, he's in the army. He's just constantly like overseas and stuff. So um, that kind of just, cause huge gaps in uh, his MMA training. So, like, he, he, he'd be trying to get back to being fit after being six months away overseas. And then same thing again, finally getting back fit and then shipped off again. And same as myself, kind of, it's funny that I can, he, it was just like me looking into the future. Like, Matthew was played with injuries as well, just through him. Um, through the army's training basically like even at the moment now like he has a broken foot and he's just walking around on it and he's just he's just, just a hardy it out. he's just a hardy bastard like he's waiting for surgery on that but like still he'll still train on that stuff but like nothing that he could commit to a, a fight camp on like and was it Matthew that got into martial arts and MMA first or kind of did y'all start at the same time like I know I was looking at technology and you have they have you listed as, as having fought first back in 2013, but I think some of Matthew's fights might not be on there. Uh, Matt, Matthew definitely fought first. Matthew fought like Rumble and Rush years ago um, when we were back in Kokoro. So Matthew joined Kokoro, and then I joined Kokoro with one of my friends because uh, I just quit hurling at the time. And the only reason I got into MMA is because my friend had gone into the street fight and he wanted to learn how to fight. Okay. And I was like, ah. and I was like, I'm doing literally nothing else at the moment. I'll just go with you. Like I had no interest in it. And like Matthew was going like once or twice a week, and he'd come back and go, "Oh, look, look at this armor thing. I'll show you." I said, oh, "I don't, I don't care. I don't care." And then I finally went 
just with my friend. And he quit after a week and I ended up just staying because I was like, I'm doing nothing else. Uh, that was that was when I was 16, so that was like nine years ago. So, yeah. Yeah, and it, that, it's kind of crazy. Like, you're only, what, 25 now, are you? 25 now, yeah. 25, and like, you've been fighting since 20, it was 2013, I think, was your first amateur fight. Like that's all, like coming up on, yeah. on nine years now. Like that's kind of crazy. Like you're you're almost like a, a veteran of the the MMA scene in Ireland when you're you're only yeah. twenty five years old. Like what's it like? Has it, I, I suppose has it been frustrating for you that you're not with the injuries that you're not further along in your pro career at this point? Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, it is. It is quite frustrating. Like, uh, like even you see, like, uh, I always relate to like Paul Hughes that like he. He had his bro- a broken hand, like recurring broken hand injury, and like he was he was gone for ages. And people kind of forgot about him, but now like once you get that uh, little run going together and you keep your body fit and healthy, and you you have that string of fights, like you kind of just forget about all the injuries. Like of course you're gonna you're gonna have them, but uh, I feel now the way I'm training now at the moment. Uh, just taking everything professional. Um, I think I, I can't see myself getting injured again like that, or like definitely not percentage, like the percentage of me getting injured uh, injured is definitely lower. So. And do you feel like now is kind of the time to kick on? Like what are your goals, I guess your short-term goals over the next couple of years? Short-term goals is getting fights closer together. Um, like it's, my last fight was March 2020, and I was meant to fight then. They were meant to do a show in April, uh, April uh, of that year or May, whatever, in Belfast. And I wanted to get straight onto that to get a bit of a run because I felt March was just like, I, even going into that fight, I still, I still had a few niggly injuries, and like it wasn't a solid performance. Like it, it was literally just show up kind of. And scrape the cobwebs off, and that's why I wanted that, just to kind of shake the cobwebs off, and then use the next one as a, a real, a real show of my level kind of. But like now with this, I really feel that a lot of the cobwebs are just shut out. Uh, like I've I've been doing a lot, a lot, a lot of sparring, and not heavy sparring, but like a lot of sparring, just to kind of shake those last few cobwebs off come in here fully confident and I am yeah and like you're talking about I think that's the, the Karen Sturrock fight you're talking about there you know f- first round submission yeah. win like you're kind of saying you're not happy with it you, you, yeah I, I, you just, frustrated? I, I still find that like like you can ask anyone in the gym that like the level that I train at in the gym is so much higher than I show fights and I don't know whether that's just bad weight cuts or what or just a bit of nerves or I just still feel my level I haven't showed it properly and that's the ma- that's the main thing that I want to do for this next fight and the fights after like if I if I go out and get starched the first round in the first 10 seconds fair enough fuck it there's nothing I can do but I know if I can just go out there and show my level that I've no problem beating a lot of people in this division like and that, that's that's my main goal. And to do that, all I have to do is stay fit and healthy and keep on training sensibly and uh, tough. That's it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's interesting that you like you talk about, you know, like wanted to, I guess, sh- show, show kind of who you are as, as a martial artist or as a fighter in there. Like, I think a lot of people will, will look to you and say, okay, look, you, you have a two and two record, which on paper isn't great. But when you talk, when, you know, people talk in Irish MMA, they would kind of hold you in, in, in a high regard. Like if you look at, say, if we look at, say, your losses, right? At amateur, it was the quarterfinals of the IMFs to Rostam Ackman. And that was, he yeah. went on to fight in the UFC, just fought Ian Gary for the Cage Warriors title. Then you made your pro debut. Was it Matthew Bonner, current uh, middleweight champion of Cage Warriors? And then obviously that incredible war with Ian Gary, who now has gone on to, to win the Cage Warriors title and, and sign with the UFC. And he's kind of the, the next big hype um, coming out of Ireland. So like you must take a lot of, you must take a lot. Like obviously, there are losses on your record, but you weren't finished. Yeah, and but you gave a good account of yourself in each of them. Yeah, it's definitely a valuable experience. Like uh, I do take that into like 
is part of my mindset that um, that when I'm going into a fight, I know that I've I've fought like my two losses are against like well not Ian's, Ian's left now, but like current uh cage wars champions um and even the last rostam uh that was at middleweight in the imax and i weighed i think i was weighing in at 79 kilos that because and that was with clothes on and like my phone in my pocket and everything like i just kind of said yes to that last second kind of didn't didn't really expect much from the world but it was it was valuable experience again and yeah, yeah, like the, and when, when you the when you reflect on the the Ian Gary fight, like like a lot a lot of people are going to talk about that in Irish MMA for a long, long time. Um, what what like how do you what are your thoughts on it now? Kind of with a bit of time removed from it. Um, I think I was stupid in the fight. I I was so caught up in trying to portray myself nearly as like, yeah, I'm, I'm tough. This doesn't phase me. And like, at that stage, he was racking up points on me. And fair enough, like, I hate making excuses, right? Like Ian was absolutely superb on the night. Um, but the fact that I was just walking down with like my knee hanging off me, like I couldn't really bounce in and out or kind of take down, take him down the way I wanted. And a bit of a bit of arrogance and ego on my side. I'm like, oh yeah, no problem. I, like I can stand here and take all your shots and be fine. But like, I I wasn't landing enough on Ian, and he was he was winning the fight. There's no point being tough. You have to be better. That that that's basically what I took from that fight. It's like yeah, it showed toughness and like you can take all these shots, but like there's no point taking shots if you don't win the fight. So I would have liked to. Uh, I would have liked to be a bit smarter. You use my toughness, but in a bit of a smarter way. That's, that's fair enough. And I guess looking ahead to to next week with Emil Brown, have you watched much tape on him? He's obviously I, I, like he's a, a yeah. good, good guillotine, and um, I think all his wins have come by by guillotine choke and two and zero now in cage wars. Yeah, yeah. He's, pro. He's, he's two and zero pro. He's from a good gym, like um, like that. He's he's a good good fighter, um, but. One thing that I noticed that like the guys he's fighting just aren't I, I, I don't highly highly rate them. And the the guillotine's like fair enough, he, he does have a good guillotine. Um but same thing, I just feel like the once those his opponents were in the guillotine, they didn't really do much to defend and just kind of like oh this, this is it, this is over. Uh, but it's it's definitely going to be an inter- interesting matchup. Um, I'd like to see, like to see how he's going to do against me. Um, I don't think he's faced anyone like me. I think I've faced harder, tougher, uh, tougher uh, opposition myself. And now that the camp I've had, and after beating Kyron on. What I describe as like one of my worst performances, and I'm coming in here feeling ten times better. Like I hate doing predictions because it's a it's a fight. Like you never know what's gonna happen. But I'm going in highly, highly confident that I'm going to uh, beat Emil Brown. So, do you think you've leveled up? Do you think you're a different fighter than you you were maybe two years ago? Yes, yes, big time. Um, and nearly every aspect of my striking, my grappling, everything. Yeah, and I know, you, I know you said you don't like giving predictions, but uh, I, I'll press you for one anyway. Um, what, what are we expecting on, on Friday night? Uh, maybe a third round finish for me. I don't know what finish. Fair enough. I think, then- uh, we'll, we'll go into the later rounds. Okay, and then one last thing. Um, I, I was watching. I don't know if you saw the interview that that Brett Okamoto did with Nick Diaz. He's obviously returning this weekend, so this will probably be out by the time he's he's fought. Uh, he'll have already fought. But um, you've mentioned in an interview before, and you mentioned earlier on today, just about about nerves. And you know, Nick was kind of saying like he doesn't enjoy fighting. Do you do you enjoy fighting when you go in there? Uh, no, no, I enjoy. I enjoy the competitiveness, 
I, I, that's what I love about MMA, that, like, it's one of the most competitive sports ever, that, like, like, I don't, th I think the mental preparation for it, the physical preparation for it, everything, and then the actual act of fighting is, is a great concoction of mental and physical, and I absolutely love afterwards, whether it be win or loss or like pushing to the absolute limit, but fighting itself, like I don't enjoy getting hit and I don't enjoy, I don't enjoy hurting people. I only hurt people to win basically. Right. And that doesn't mean that like, like any, that, that time that I got that, uh, that 10 second knockout in the first round, like that was just like, I was jumping around like full of adrenaline. And the second I kind of calmed down, I was just like, oh, geez, man, I hope he's all right. Like, it's more, more I, that I, you're I on know. autopilot with the emotions. Yeah, you're just, you're just on autopilot. And like, even my girlfriend says to me that, like, yeah, she's like, oh, that's, that's mad. And everything, like, she watches, uh, she's actually gotten into it. She's like, oh, it's very brutal. Like, I, I wouldn't think you do that. And I was like, all I'll say is, anytime you're in there, it, you're not thinking, you're just reacting. And, once you have time to react then like i was just like jeez man i hope he's all right and yeah yeah that's what i'd say I, I love the competitiveness of it and uh, of course i don't like fucking weight cutting but uh yeah i i, I do love mma sport but like fighting per se i wouldn't say i i love fighting you're a gent i appreciate the honesty james who's in your who's in your corner this weekend Ed, andy, andy uh, the little brother Graham. Andy and Graham. Good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. James, I'm much swap Graham in. Oh, is that? Graham in the third round. <laughs> yeah. He can go in and, and finish the job. For yeah, you, yeah. I'll just, just slip off. Yeah, <laughs> Take a seat. James, yeah. I really, really appreciate the time. Uh, plug your social media handles or, or sponsors or anything you'd like. Uh, uh, yeah, it's just it's James Sheen at MMA. Uh, then I just want to give a shout out to the lads at Kim Barber. They're uh, they're always supporting me from literally the start, and they're always sorting me out. So uh, shout out to them, sticking with me through all these injuries and everything. So thanks very much. Shout out him, Barber. Nice one, James. Well, uh, best of luck this or next week. Uh, this week by the time this comes out, but best of luck yeah. uh, against O'Neill Brown. Welterweight contest. Cage Warriors one two eight. Friday the 1st of October on UFC Fight Pass sign up early and tune in much appreciated for the time James all the best Andy. thanks